I was a survivor and survivors didn't count. The first thing I wanted to do when I came out of camp, when I stood outside the gate, I said, nobody cared what happened to us. I will never be a bystander. Where there is a need, nobody will ask me ever where were you when. It was time to tell the story. And it wasn't easy. I know that some, some teachers sent a note with the children from Jewish schools that a survivor will be speaking and the mothers wouldn't let the kids come to school. And I persisted. I didn't give up. My story had to be out there. And that was from 1964. Yeah, I realized along the way that we don't have a voice at the table at the claims conference. And that's when I got together with, you have a picture of you know, Hank was there and Nate was there and we got together in my apartment and we created Holocaust Survivors of Canada and my, uh, what I wanted is have a seat at the table. I could never step on the soil in Auschwitz where there is ashes of my family. Survivors say that's their victory. My victory is when I have all my family around my table for Yontif and Shabbos. My one grandson is a modern Orthodox rabbi. The other son, a grandson, just got married in Mea Shearim. And my children are, you know, my grandson saved one year in the Israeli army and was in Gaza last year. That is my victory. I don't have to go to Auschwitz to do it, but I just don't even look that way. We all handle our grief. See, as I said my, a few years ago, when Elie Wiesel presented me with an award, and I said, our bodies were liberated. We are still here. We are still there, and we will be liberated when we lay to rest. This is what we carry with us. And my uh, obligation is to tell the story, and that's what I'm doing.